Hey, everybody. Welcome. 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 We got a phenomenal podcast for you today. Your saltwater guide. Super excited. We got the man, Bill Batson from Batson Enterprises joining us today. We're going to talk all about our passion of fishing. But I wanted to say real quick, it's Deccan Sports Friday. Dave and the gang over at Deccan Sports always have some cool videos for us to show you. We're going to show you a good one here about midway through. And I just want to thank him very much. I hope you all watched that live fishing show yesterday. We are on to something. We did almost six hours live on the water on Facebook and YouTube live yesterday. And we had thousands and thousands of people watching the show. And that, those thousands of people were you guys. So thank you all very, very much. I can't do this without you watching. If you're not watching, we're not doing anything. But I want to thank you all so much. And the positiveness that's coming out of these live shows, fishing shows, myself, Elliot, Justin, and Pablo, we're staying right on the comments. So as you all saw when you watched that fishing show, five hours live yesterday, 0, 0.0 negativity on there. That was insane. And the boys put together a heck of a day, didn't they? Three halibut. The smallest one being 17, the biggest one being 27, and then full limits of rockfish plus full limits of red vermilion rockfish. So what a phenomenal day to watch. And just a half day of fishing out of Long Beach Harbor, come on. Justin's on a roll. So I want to thank you all very much for watching that and being a part of. He's not going to go live the rest of the weekend because the Grand Prix of Long Beach is going on, so he can't even get to his boat, let alone go out there and do a live show. So we'll get back after that on Monday or Tuesday. We'll be opening up some open party trips. You guys want to be on there? We'll make you stars. You can be out there fishing live and having fun and being super positive. Gang, thank you all very, very much for everything you do for Kelly and I. We really appreciate it. And just keep watching all these great videos. That video Elliot put out for me this morning of fishing in the back bay with Al Clowers catching those big sharks. That was incredible. That was so much fun. Everybody's watching that video. It's incredible. So what's going on? Are we ready? Bill, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Dave. Nice to see you again. Hey, I'm so excited. I was very, very excited when you said when we saw each other at the PCS show and you said you would love to be on my show. I didn't even know you knew about my show. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, you've done a lot for our industry. Uh, you made it a lot of things accessible. You've t taught a lot of people, a lot of different things, and it's an honor to be here. I think like you said, before we went live, the number one thing is the lack of neg or there's no negative, not the lack of, there is zero negativity allowed on our platform. So yeah. I'm very proud of that. But hey, you got a history kind of like I do. We both didn't have much of a choice. We both grew up. Our dads were doing this when they were little boys. So why don't you tell me how you got into this fishing thing or how long has your dad been doing this? Oh, my dad told me about he was been fishing as, as long as he can remember. He was fishing off his surfboard back in the day. You know, he grew up in California and Southern California. And we moved to Hawaii. Uh, in the early 70s, probably 71. I was about four years old. And we've always fished. I mean, we fished because um, we love to eat fish. And we supplemented our income fishing and things like that. And so I was the oldest of all the boys in that generation. You know, in the 60s, I was born in 67. And when we moved to Hawaii, I was the bait guy or I was the guy holding the bag where everybody was spearing fish and they were putting the fish in the bags. And so that was pretty cool. A lot of good memories there. First time I saw my dad build a fishing rod, I was 12 years old. I just came home from soccer practice and my dad was sitting in the living room and he was sitting there wrapping a 13 foot one piece Fenwick blank. We used to fish Ulua's off the beach in Hawaii, off the rocks in Hawaii, a slide bait, you know, Ulua rods. And I said, dad, what are you doing? He's like, I'm building us some better tools. Because a fishing rod is a tool, right? Oh, and yeah. for us, it was like a shovel or anything or a chainsaw or anything that you use to make a living or to feed your family. It was a tool. So we made, my dad started making custom fishing rods back in 1978, 79. Um, so that, that's, that was my first introduction to the custom rod market uh, to build a better tool. 
And then you think back to those days when you were a kid watching your dad build that rod. Wasn't those magical times as a child just thinking about when you're looking at the rod and you're watching? And I, I used to sit at the office because my dad had all those sport boats back in the start in the 40s. And I right. grew up at the office watching the, the old timers wrap the rods as a kid and just going. Then you take that rod and you go down there and you get on the boat and you go out and you catch a fish with the rod that he just wrapped. Those are magical things to think about, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's like anything else. If you put your blood, sweat, and tears into something or or you craft something and you go out and you and you catch a fish with it, I mean, that's that's the epitome of something that you can go out and just enjoy. I mean, because this is a recreational industry for a lot of folks. And like I tell people, custom rods aren't for everybody. It's for the 10% that catch 90% of the fish. That's what I tell somebody. You want to be a 10%er that catch 90% of the fish, then you need a custom rod. You, It's nice to have a custom rod to be able to species specific, technique specific. You know, my arms are this long. This is where I like to hold the real seat. This is all the stuff that I want. You know, um, people are going to get a custom rod. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, the bit, the best thing about when we were little kids, we grew up, and I'm, I'm sure you heard of this company, but when you were a little kid, Growing up on the sport boats in the 70s, there was one company here in Southern California in Gardena called the Bent Rod. And you had to have a bent rod. You had to have that that rod made. That was the for us. And then came Yo's and all the other yeah. places afterwards. But right. the bent rod was the first place. And they had those saber blanks. And you got them wrapped with, which was mind-boggling for a kid. You got your color. What, what's your favorite color, Billy? Right. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and you go purple. And they go, okay. Right. And what's right. your second favorite color? And you go black. And they go, okay, here's a purple and black rod with your name on it. You're like, yeah. oh. Yeah. So Every it's, it's, fish just felt a little better when you caught it with your custom wrapped fishing pole, right? Yeah, most definitely. You know, my dad was, was able to build a nice... Uh, company out of it he had phantom custom rods in hawaii for a long time you know he'd been on tv with mike sakamoto fishing tales with mike sakamoto back in the day you know in the 80s in the late 70s and it was it was pretty cool to be raised in that industry and then we decided that we wanted to make better parts so that now we make all the parts to build the rods right so we're the parts and pieces we're like the nuts and bolts of the fishing rod industry anybody who builds a fishing rod use something from us so we, we, just, we just took it to the next level. We want to make a better real seat or we want to make better guides or we want to make better blanks for everybody to enjoy. So that's where we are now. And there's Charissa that we were <laughs> talking Charisse. about yeah. watching the show. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we love to give back. I mean, we got to take those kids fishing, right? Some of the best memories of my life were me fishing with my dad. I mean, bar none. I talked to my son. He goes, some of the best memories are me and my son fishing when he was a kid, you know, taking him on the river and catching trout or, or salmon or whatever we catch, we were catching at the time. But it's important for our next generation, the kids. It's all about the kids at this right. point. And we talk about that on our show every day. I'm just pounding it into everyone's mind because there it changed your life. Your for father, sure. your father introduced you to it and you, you got a burnt memory when you were 12 watching your dad wrap that 12 foot rod that's burnt into your mind. Can, can you think of a world where you couldn't go fishing? No. Right. What would I, what would I do? I mean, that's what I do for my downtime, right? It's I'm blessed to be in an industry. That's what I do for a living. But at the same time, that's my downtime. I can turn my cell phone off. I can go in my boat. I can have the peace and serenity of just being out there fishing. And it's not always about catching. It's about being out there and enjoying with friends and family or whoever you're with. That's what it's about. You know, I, I got, I do have that 13 foot one piece Fenwick hanging on the office wall right here oh underneath, underneath an 80 pound GT. My dad caught off the beach with it. So that is so killer. <laughs> it is pretty uh, cool. Yeah. That gets yeah. you right in the heart, man. It brings those tears to your eyes it because does. of the joy. Yeah, the joy sure. that fishing has brought all of us. And gang, you listen back to all of my podcast. Every single one of our guests talk about something that happened in their childhood that did this. And and here yep. Bill and I sitting here and 
we just did something a little bit different than everyone else. And we're sitting here in the position that we're sitting in here, but it's all about fishing period. I mean, at the end of the day, you can feel Bill's passion when you talk to him. And I know a lot of you say you feel the passion when I'm talking. It was because our dads took us fishing, our grandpas or our uncles or whoever it was in your life. So always remember when you're looking at those children in your life, take them fishing. Take a kid fishing. I mean, take them fishing. Man, well, some of the best times I, I I still take a lot of kids fishing and friends that have kids and my kids are pretty much growing up. My grandkids are going to be fishing soon, you know, um, but just the joy of taking a kid out and having him hook up. I don't even fish anymore. I just hand I just hand them the rod and let them fish and I get as much joy watching the kids catch fish than I would catching the fish myself. Probably more, right? Probably yeah. more because we already <laughs> caught them. We already. I know. I've, already, I've done it all, right? I've done a lot of it. So, um, watching somebody else catch a fish is just amazing. Without and that. when it's a child and you can see that smile, just you can't wipe it off their face. It's just the bitchiness feeling, and you give back like nobody. I mean, I work with AFCO, and Bill Shed is the king of give back, and then yep. Bill Batson's the king of give back. You understand how important it is that if we don't give this back, there won't be anything. And you know, California is on a mission to stop fishing. And so you work closely. I work closely with CCA California. We work so close trying to keep fishing open. And then you've gone even a step further. Now you're working with what, nine years now with Rollo's kids, taking kids fishing. Yeah. You give back like nobody's business. That, that set of rods you gave at the PCS show, those things were beautiful. Your rod builders did a phenomenal job putting that together. Yeah, it's nice. Giving back is very important. Speaking of those rods, my son built those rods for that for that program. So it's even more special for me to have my son because my father was rod builder. I was a rod builder. You know, oh, let's see what I, I was a rod builder to supplement my income, and now my son's a rod builder. So him to build those rods for the sport for the Rollo program is very important. Yes, yeah, so us giving back. I don't, I don't need any accolades. I I give out of the kindness of my heart, and I do it with joy because I'm in a position to be able to help people. I think it's very important that we, if you're in a position to help somebody, no matter what it is, whether it's you know, feeding a family or paying somebody's bills or making sure the kids are growing fishing or whatever the case is. If you're in a position to help people, you should. The fishing and rod industry has given me a lot. So I, I give back to the fishing rod industry. I give back to veterans because I believe we would not be the greatest country in the world without our vets. I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you I, I support a lot of different vet, veterans programs, armed services, anything like that. I really believe in those types of things. Widows children, all of that stuff. I love to give. Like I said, God has blessed me and my family to be in a position to help other people. It's my job to give back. And you do. And, and it's, I'm proud to be able to call you my friend. And I'm super proud to have you on the show today because of the human being that you are. When it comes down to it, gang, it's all about what kind of a human are you? And yep. that's what I care about more than anything at the age. Now that I'm an old man, I look back at all the the bad things that I did in my life. And I'm going, yeah, I'm glad I'm in a position where I'm at today, where I'm able to give and give and give to all the different people that I'm able to give, because it wasn't like that when I was younger, this industry is a weird industry. And <laughs> I grew up in it. You couldn't have grown up in it any deeper than I grew up in it. So I know the, in, the, the, the parts that I hated about it. And I don't allow those into the, what we're doing today, as you'll see, as we go along, because now Bill's going to be more involved in the community gang over there at the website. And Dave Burris yeah. and you are going to be having some conversations. And Bill's going to be helping us out over on the rod building side, Dave Burris. He already, he just talked about it before we went live. So I'm super excited about that. And you and Dave hooking up because Dave makes some beautiful products. And with your help, with your components, it'll just go to the whole next level. So thank you. This is going to be, this is going to be incredible. I'm so excited. I don't know if you can feel it out there, gang, but yeah, I'm pretty damn excited because <laughs> I love fishing. It's my passion. There's nothing right. more important. Like I did last week, I jumped on a plank. We did this show, Bill, and right after the show, my buddy, one of my guides, Al, right there, he's on the show. How magical is that? He's on the show right now. He called me up. He said, if you were going to come bone fishing with me tomorrow would be the best tide. I said, tomorrow? He said, yeah. I said, 
Kelly booked the flight. I was on a plane an hour later and I was at his house and we went bonefish fishing the next morning and I caught 11. Yeah, well, here we are, bone fishing. <laughs> Where were you? San Diego. Oh, nice. San Diego Back Bay, Bill. I never fished it before in my whole life in my 49 year career. That was the first time I ever fished it and it was full speed, three hours. We were bit the whole time. I know Tommy Gomes likes to fish back there too, I think. Yep, Tommy's my man. Tommy and Al yeah. are very good friends. Al yeah. is like Al Clowers fishing our uh his charter boat business, fishing that back bay. He made that back bay famous. Al's been doing it for a very, very long time. He's an old guy like us, and he's been taking <laughs> people back there. And there it is. There's that's my big one, 15 inch bone fish. It was insane. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, my sister fishes back there on her kayak too. It was yeah. just such a special day, and Al's just a special human being. If any of you out there are watching and you, you want to go do something really special, you got to take advantage of uh, what Al's got going on in that back bay. He'll take you on your own boat and show you how to do it on his boat. We're not playing hide the ball anymore. Those days are long gone. People yeah. that are playing hide the ball now, they're not going to be in business anymore. I'm just telling you. It's a yeah. kinder, softer, gentler fishing industry today. And, yeah, we need we need to share. Definitely need to share. And now that we have this the electronic industry that we have, and it's it's we should be sharing all of our knowledge and helping other people enjoy what we do. Absolutely, my good friend Matt Ryan, he's got a question for you, Bill. What is your very favorite rod? Depending on what I'm fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, I lo I love to tuna fish, so mm -hmm. probably. The RCTB 76 double XH for those bigger fish. Uh, it's a seven and a half foot, you know, 80 to un unlimited rain shadow composite blank. Um, I caught my biggest bluefin on it, 241 pounds. I was fishing with Jake on the prime time. Jake's a good guy. He has a great operation. That would probably be one of my favorite rods for fishing bigger fish. I mean, obviously, if I'm fishing salmon steelhead, I like my 10 and a half foot float rods. If I'm fishing rockfish, I like my RCKJBs. So that's a pretty open question, but feel free to email me anytime. If you have any questions, I'm always answering questions. Yeah. Did you see Daniel just threw a question? I don't know if you've talked to Daniel yet about his real quick real seats. I, I did see the real quick real seats. I still have some questions and my designers need to take a look at it. So um, it's, there not, you go, it's Daniel. not, it's not, it's not off the table yet, Daniel. But I do need to send a sample up to uh, have Mike Thorson and my design team take a look at it. And you got to think about that too, Daniel. Like Bill said, it, and they, be, they make the superior product. Their products are the very best in the world. So that's got to make you feel good inside if he's going to take a look at it. That's not, like he said, that's not the door closed. That's making sure it's the very best it could possibly be if he's going to put his name on it. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm putting... If I'm promoting a product, it's going to be the best product in the industry. And there's got to, you got to look at all the pros and cons of everything. I mean, everything from the relationships to how easy is it for access? I mean, there's so many different things, but we could talk about that some other time. Yeah. That's for you and Daniel to talk about yeah. off of this show. But gang, Al Clower's information's up there. If you want to do that bonefish thing, which I would definitely suggest doing it because everybody that watched that video on our YouTube, YouTube channel, they're just going bananas. To, and Bill, I never even knew there were bonefish in San. I heard rumors <laughs> there's bonefish in the back bay of San Diego. But to yep. go and f focus on them, and the only reason we didn't catch more is because other fish got to the bait before the bonefish did. That was the only reason. <laughs> we're using ultralight rods, making it real fun. Oh, you know, yeah, a lot of guys using, fish fly rods. We're using little custom built spinning rods. Perfect. With, uh, and I learned how to tie the drop shot, which I never did before, because that's something we don't do tuna fishing or marlin fishing. We don't do a lot of drop <laughs> shotting. And, uh, yeah, I got yeah. to learn some stuff. I got to fish with some little custom spinning rods, and it was just a fun, fun thing. And you set your drag loose. They hit like a freight train. You're fishing in five feet of water. It was just magical. It was. Yeah, they say that the bonefish pound for pound is one of the better fighting fish you know, probably behind a GT or something like that, you know? Yeah. And if you just put your ego aside and understand that you're fishing. Yeah. I mean, I'll hike, I'll hike 10 miles in the Sierras to catch a golden trout the size of a sardine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Anytime you can get on the water and have something tugged back, I don't care if you have the right equipment, obviously the right tools for the job, just like anything else. It'll be fun and you'll enjoy it for sure. Hey, absolutely. So then when you were little and you were starting to watch what your dad was doing, then your mind started to go, I want to do what my dad, do. I want to get into this rod building thing. Or how did that all come about? So um, I was, uh, you know, I was a teenager. I kind of went a different way at the time. I always fished and I always dove, but I didn't build rods. I was, a, I was an athlete. So I did, I played a lot of soccer. I was, a, I played soccer all year round. You know, um, when I got out of high school, I went to work in the restaurant industry for a while. That wasn't for me. I mean, the restaurant industry is a tough industry to be in. So back in 91, my dad says, we're moving to California. There was an opportunity for us to get off of the island. Living on the islands is very expensive. We didn't own anything. We were financially challenged my whole life. I mean, we grew up food stamps and government cheese. And, you know, we worked on a cattle ranch. and We pushed cattle for $3 an hour. My dad was a surfer. You know, so we were just kind of struggling. But in 91, he says, we're moving to California. So we moved back to California and we worked for a company called Pacific Bay. Pac Bay was one of the leaders in, or an up and coming company back then. We were in Placentia, California. And my dad started helping develop product lines, um, going over to Taiwan to machining, machining companies in Taiwan. And, and we were building blanks here in the United States. And we worked with all the manufacturers. So we just kind of grew from there. We left Pac Bay in the end of 99 and started Batson Enterprises. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, yeah. And then you did that in California or did, did you do it in Washington? No, we moved Pac Bay from Placentia in 1998. We moved okay. up to a place called Sunny Squim, Washington. That's where I'm now. Um, it's out on the Olympic Peninsula. It's a beautiful place, Dungeness Bay right in front of my house, hence the Dungeness Crab. Uh, we have shrimping, we have halibut, we have lingcod, we have salmon. Millions of salmon come through the Straits of Juan de Fuca. We're in the Straits of Juan de Fuca. We got Canada on one side and with the United States, and all those fish flow through the middle of us to go to all the rivers throughout Washington and Alaska and everywhere. So we moved that company up here, and then two years after we were here, the owners changed the rules. I'm not going to get into all this, what they did, but it wasn't fair to the Batson family. So my dad said, we're leaving. We're going to start our own. So me and my dad and my cousin and my mom started in the living room of my dad's house uh, 25 years ago, going on 25 years. And we just started sourcing the best products and designing our own products. And what you see now is the largest company in the industry. But we started in the garage 25 years ago. What a wonderful Oh, that's got to make you feel really good inside, gang. Yeah, for that's sure. Look, yeah. What's this? You got knives? Uh, we just knickknacks. You know, it's more promotional stuff. You know, we got some shirts and hats and knives. And, you know, we have a rod builder program. If you need to find a rod builder, we have, well, we, we have the largest selection in the industry for blanks and components. I mean, it, nobody, nobody touches us in regards to our distribution. I have a huge 16,000 square foot facility with, you know, 500 different blank models from small brook trout all the way up to, you know, grander marlin, whatever you can think of. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a cool industry to be in. I mean, I help get to help a lot of people. I got 700 active accounts worldwide and we're a wholesale. We don't sell anything retail and I don't sell a finished product. So I don't, I don't compete against the, you know, the seekers and the cow stars and the United composites. All those people buy parts and pieces from me. So. I mean, California market is a good market. I've developed a lot of different product lines for the California market. We've done, you know, a lot of different things. Um, you know, like I said, CalStar, you know, Pat and Leon been friends of mine for a long time. You know, obviously Leon's not around, but I still go see Pat eight, five o'clock in the morning. We hang out and, and uh, talk story for a couple hours before the employees come in or, you know, I'll go down and sit with Randy, you know, at United Composites, and he's been a big supporter of our Alps product lines, and, you know, Rick and Ed over at Seeker, you know, or, you know, just the whole industry is just, it's an amazing industry to be in. So, like I said, we're like the nuts and bolts of the fishing rod industry, and you know, everybody takes our pieces. So, one of our slogans is, the best fishing rods start here. 
you know, nice. because, because they did. Sell. Yeah, because everything starts here. You have to have your nuts and bolts to build your boat or whatever you're building, right? You have to have all the parts and pieces. So one of our taglines is the best fishing rods start here. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's been a blessing. And and uh, I get to share those blessings and I get to share my passion. Like we we talked about earlier, you know, passion, you know, people are drawn to passion. Why is that guy so passionate about what he does and what he believes in? And it opens the doors for a lot of different things and a lot of different opportunities for a lot of different people. Um, I see you guys are running how to find a rod builder, how to, how, pick, how to pick a rod, or we have a bunch of different video series and we do a lot of different things. So it's, and you it's, do them um, at yeah. the highest quality that you can do them at. That's why you're the very, very, you guys are the top of the line. It doesn't get any higher up than this because of the quality you put in and the passion. The passion is what it's all about, gang. If you're trying yeah. to start a business and you don't have a passion for it, good luck. Yeah, my dad always told me, find your gift, find your passion, and then and exploit that and try to make a living doing it. You'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, I work hard every day. I work 12, you know, 16 hours a day. I run a multi-million dollar company, but I love coming to work and I love the travel that I do. And I love the people in the industry. And so I've been able to find my passion and um my gift god gives everybody different gifts you know yeah i'm not an i'm not a designer i'm not an accountant or i'm not a you know purchasing agent you know my job is to share my passion and and the product lines that we have with, with people all over the world so it's pretty cool it's way cool hey elliot can we show bill this this bag that deckhand sports is design gang dave over at deckhand sports put together the best kill bag i've ever seen we promote it on the show. Watch this. that a beautiful product i like the way that the bin the the uh he puts those slats in there to keep the fish up out of the ice those little those little slats that hold the fish so they're not laying in that slimy water and then the other thing is he guarantees these bags are waterproof they don't leak and he has them so thick the that uh the condensation i know you've seen the condensation when you throw your fish in the other bags and the condensation gets your car wet these bags don't get anything wet they're the zippers are incredible. You can open and close them with one hand. This bag is just insane, Bill. That's nice. I do like the, the keeps that fish out of the slime, like you're talking about. You yeah, know? no one's ever done that before. No, also, I've keeps, never seen that. It keeps the bag open. So when you right. pull the zipper, the zipper flows real smooth, and you can close it again with one hand because you know, you're yeah. like me. We catch fish, we grab our fish, we can't open the zipper right it's just a phenomenal design and they went every they went as far as you could go on this design and every part of it and he's got bags from like for a calico bass he's got bags for a uh cow tuna whatever size you're looking for he's got it and then he's got all kinds of other little backpacks and all kinds of different design bags so check it out go to the website gang i don't want to waste too much of Bill's time looking at a kill bag. We got Bill Bats in here, gang. Let's talk fishing rods, but that bag is insane. It's another good tool, especially if it's made correctly, right? Just like anything else, we want, we want to use the best. We want to have people thinking about um, different things to make things better, right? So I agree with that. Nice kill bag. Actually, I've seen them. So let's go to let's go a little bit further back now. Let's go back to what we were talking about about uh, Rollo's kids taking kids oh, yeah. fishing, that whole thing. How they got got to you and got you involved? I already know because the passion you have. But talk about yeah. that for a little bit because this is a phenomenal organization, gang. And those of you that are listening that have never heard about it, check this out. Yeah, you definitely want to 
to to um, check out the Rollo program. They make a big difference in the, in this program. So were... I was I was I was fortunate enough to meet with Mike Lum. You know, through the Fred Hall experiences, he was the one that kept that Fred Hall program going. I mean, you know, I've did Fred Hall for many years. You know, we don't sell it pro at places like that, but um, Mike Lum has been a big influence in me and the kids at C program. And I've always wanted to support the kids, you know, so we do a lot of different things with the kids at C program. I know that if I remember correctly, they've taken over 170,000 kids fishing who would have never got the opportunity to go fishing. And as a kid fishing, that's some of the biggest memories of my life is going fishing, not just because I did it with my dad, but because of the whole experience. So to be able to take that many kids fishing, we know we got the tuna wars coming up. I'll be down there in June for the tuna wars and I always raffle off a bunch of custom rods. You know, I got Doc Ski built a rod for the raffle. You know, Lori, Lori Heath is a big part of that program too. She helps out with the rod building, Jim Trelecki's. So if you get a chance, check out Kids at Sea, the Rollo program. It's an amazing program. I feel so honored and blessed to be in a position to help these kids go fishing. Look at these pictures. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And the really cool thing about it, like Mike Lum was on the show a little while ago, there is zero cost for these children. The right. food's provided, the travel's provided, everything's provided through Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea program, gang. And, and none of it's possible without people like Bill and all of you that are watching today. It, it's You're donating from your heart. You're giving back to take children fishing so we can keep the passion alive because as as we all know, California is on a mission to stop fishing. We talk about it on the show all the time. But if we can keep our children into this and keep them fishing, there's a pretty good chance we're going to keep it, keep fishing open. So when you're thinking about programs, this is a phenomenal program to think about. There's the man, Frank Lopresky. There he is. Yep. That's awesome. You know, I'm going to be down in June for the Tuna Wars. You know, they have three boats that go out and all the, all those funds get channeled into the kids and taking those kids fishing you know dave marciano's coming down and nancy his wife and they got another bob i'm not sure remember bob's last name but from the wicked tuna show those guys coming in from the wicked tuna show they bring a lot of uh, publicity and a lot of support so i will fly down from washington just for the event to go to the captain's meeting i won't be fishing it but I will be fishing somewhere. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once you get down there, maybe go back bay fishing me and you go catch some bonefish. Uh, I've got a, I've got the jackpot, the prime time. I mean, the prime time used to be the jackpot with um, Jake freeze. Oh he's yeah. Got a, he's got a brand new 72 footer six pack <sighs> luxury nice. six pack. I got to go out in March on a beautiful, it's a team rain shadow boat. So I, I had, you know, 28 custom rods put on the boat so whenever he's taking clients out because that's a high dollar client clientele you know um that they're fishing the rain shadow so i'll probably jump on a boat with him but i will definitely be fishing but i will oh, make yeah. i will make a special trip always make a special trip for the kids so i will fly from washington down there just to attend and be the auctioneer for the fishing rods at the um tuna wars uh, rollo program Perfect. That's that's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted people to get more aware of. I brought Mike on here and him and Tim. We did some good fundraising for them on the show here. And hopefully we keep that ball rolling along when you hear guys like Bill Batson talking about how important it is. Maybe that'll help you guys a little bit to understand how important this whole project is taking kids fishing. And it doesn't cost these kids a, a penny, which is the really cool thing about it. And these are children that like Mike Lum was saying, these are children that live 10, 12 miles from the ocean in L.A. and they've never even seen the ocean. You have no idea how this can just change someone's life. And the next thing you know, they're the next Bill Batson or the next your saltwater guide. You just don't know. Kids, right. the, the whole fishing thing is so magical. Like when I had uh, had the guys from Taddy Lures on here and we were talking about how cool it was when we were little kids to get our first bag of lures and just sit there on the bed and stare at them and think about what you could catch with it and what it resembles. Same thing with the fishing rod. 
Our, our one of our good buddies, I'm sorry, I got so much to talk about, but one of our good buddies, Matt, wanted to know, Bill, of all of the fishing rods you guys have been in charge of pr producing and making and you and your family, and I think we already know it's on the wall right there, but what's the one that has the most special story behind it? Uh, obviously, the rods of my dad. See, I own, I own probably the largest custom rod collection privately owned in the United States. There's over 800 custom rods in the Batson collection, and some of them were... I mean, old bamboo rods that were custom made, all the way rods that my dad made. So the rod, the rod hanging on my office right here is probably one of, if not the most special rod, because that's the one that I remember my first rod that I've ever saw my dad build. It's a 13 foot one piece Fenwick blank, and it has the reflector tape because we fished at nighttime, and um, it has the bell holder because we used to put the bells on it, and then we got a, I got a picture of us fishing and right next to it and then i have the gt hanging on the office wall i mean it's very special so but there's so many rods in the collection from rods that people made for my father after he passed away because my father passed away in 2003 um a, a massive heart attack and uh we used to fish together we played softball together we, we used to hunt we did everything together me and my father he was my best friend and my mentor and God took him. I guess God needed another fishing partner in heaven because there's no reason why, right? But when this whole thing got thrown in my lap, you know, I'm in 2003, um, my mother came to me and says, well, what do we do now? I says, well, my father started this legacy. We, we got to keep it going. And I was in no really position. I mean, I was, I was a salesman. I'm a rod builder. You know, I'm a fisherman. Do I know how to run a company? No, but God gave me the strength and I, and a lot of good people came into my life and make sure that we uh, continue to move forward. And now we're, we can't be stopped. That is a phenomenal story, but that's what I thought the rod would be that one hanging up there is yeah. first rod that he, and then there's many questions about different kinds of rods and different kinds of blanks gang. I just want you to understand Bill Batson puts together the best products to build the rods. So, you yeah. got to be careful. If we're not answering your questions about what do you think of a shadow stalker or what do you think of this or what do you think of that? We're talking about the man that puts out the best components in the business. The, when you look at your rod and you look at the guides and you look at the, the seat that your reel sets on or the hypalon that you hold on to, all that stuff's coming from bats and enterprises. So when we get down to the nitty gritty of what's his favorite blank to fish with, well, that's hard to put a, First of all, he's not making the rod blank. He's uh, wrapping other people's rod blank or getting That's the components cool. for other people. Go ahead. Explain it better. I'm sorry. Actually, we sell blanks also. Okay. There's, there's a lot of fact. There's a lot of companies that make their own blanks and we supply them with components. For instance, I can, I can testify towards the uh, California market since we're, we're in the Southern California market. Seeker makes their own blanks. Calstar makes their own blanks. United Composite makes their own blanks. Those people make their own blanks. I sell them the components to make them. There's other people that don't have blank factories that might buy my blank and, and put their name on it on a private label, but they build it all. So we don't sell a finished product. I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but we're selling nuts and bolts to put fishing rods together. Um, so for me to pick out who makes the best rod, so a lot of people make the best rod. I mean, I mean, depending on the application, depending on the species specific, that's what makes what we do a lot different. Not too many people do what we do at the volume that we do it at. Like when I say, if you have a fishing rod and it's hanging up, if I looked at it, I could tell you, well, that's my butt cap or that's my hook keeper or that's one of my tip tops or, the, you know, that's one of my real seats or whatever the case might be. So we don't have a finished product but we're the parts and pieces guys. Cause you have to have parts and pieces to make stuff. Um, we've just taken it to the next level. And then as far, okay. Now I'm, ex now I'm, I'm very interested in the rod blanks. Cause yeah. Yes. Okay. Because see, I'm learning too. So the rod blanks, one of our members, Matt wanted to know what rod blank would you use to go surface iron fishing? What would you suggest on that? Your rod blanks, not other people's. For a surface iron, we have um, 810 rods. I know it's hard to ship longer rods, you know, 8 foot, 810. Uh, probably the SW series, SW 1087, 1088, 1089s. 
for surface iron. Uh, we have a new one called the old man jig stick that was that we developed lately. It's an eight and a half footer. But if you want it to be 10 foot, we have a foot and a half extension, spigot ferrule extension. You can put it in the back end and glue it in. So depending on uh, what you want to use. Uh, we have 500 different models that we stock. You can go to the Batson website. You can see and put in jig stick, for instance. And you can find out what we, what we suggest for a jig stick. Um, we've designed over 2,000 different blanks. I mean, people... All over the world. I mean, we sell over a hundred thousand blanks a year. Nobody sells as much blanks as Batson. I mean, from ice fishing rods all the way to, you name it, uh, ten foot one piece surf rods and all kind of stuff. But anyways, you can see he can scroll through my website and find all the different stuff that we that we uh, supply. And see, that's what's going to be fun here, gang. Those of you that are members of our website, yoursaltwaterguide.com, Dave Burris is our rod builder there. And yeah. Bill Batson's going to be bringing in some other rod builders to help Dave out. But we're going to start putting together some uh, Your Saltwater Guide series of rods. There's no reason why we haven't done this yet, except for the fact that I haven't sat down with anybody like Bill and talked about it. But Bill and I talked about it before. I think we can start to put together a bitch and thing with Dave Burris on board. And those of you that are out there, like Bill Batson said, those are guys with the custom rods. Those are the guys <laughs> that are catching 90% of the fish. They're the 10 percenters. You want to be one of those 10 percenters. You want to have your saltwater guide series of rods. This is how this kind of community comes together and things mm -hmm. like this happen. We got good people like Bill helping us out. Then we got Dave Burris helping us out. Gang, we could do something really special here. You guys could all be a part of this and have the Your Saltwater Guide series of rods where you call Dave Burris up and you say, Dave, what jig stick do I want? Because you can't call Bill. Bill's running a multi-million dollar corporation. <laughs> but you could call Dave Burris because he's got, he's got Bill's catalog and he'll tell you which rod you want and then make you one with your name on it and your colors. Come on, we're in. We're getting that hundred percent, right, Bill? That's right. I want to be a, you know, I don't market to everybody, right? I market to the ten percenters, the real serious fishermen. I mean, yeah, there's people that go fishing once a year, or whatever the case might be. We want the ten percenters. We want the guys that catch ninety percent of the fish. I mean, it's an old saying that I've known for a long time, and um, we want the serious guy. I mean, we want the guy that wants wants to have the best thing. I mean, I don't. I don't sell a lot of low, I don't sell any low end products. I mean, all my stuff is a higher end product that you can get. Um, but we have a lot of different products to choose from. That's about customizing anything, right? You customize your car. You, people are even customizing their phones and they're doing all kinds of stuff. Why would you not customize a tool that you have that you're going to be using to go out and enjoy yourself on? I mean, it just makes sense to me. I mean, I've been doing this a long time and it's always made sense to me. I mean, I know some people use it as a supplemental income if they want to become rod builders. I mean, we have instructional videos on how to become a rod builder. You want to learn how to repair your own guide or your tip top, or if your, your hype is all beat up and you want to fix it, you know, we, we can tell you how to do that. I mean, custom rod market is probably uh, 30% of my business. The other 70% is, is the manufacturers that I supply, but my, my true roots come from the custom rod market. So, to have a format like what you have now and all the exposure you have on your website, it's a no brainer for me to want to be part of your team, Dave, and, and help build that part of our industry through what you've already created. Wow. That makes me feel pretty special, Bill. Thank you very, very much. That's not what, why I asked you to come on the show, but I'm oh, honored that you would do that with us. That yeah. is pretty special gang. You guys, if you're not members of our website, I think you're really missing out on something special because the community, like Justin and Pablo and I were talking yesterday, Bill, we did this live fishing show. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see any of them. We did it live lobster fishing this year. We did 64 live hoop net trips, 64 different nights. And I think Elliot can tell you the numbers were out uh, unbelievable in the millions of viewers, millions. Awesome. And so we said, let's do it. Let's do the fishing part. So we did that yesterday. We launched our first live fishing show and we had just an unbelievable amount of people watching. But at the end of the day, we sat down. 
on the phone, the three of us, and we were just like, this family is what's incredible. Fishing, the family, the fishing family with no negativity. And like you talked about, it sucks when you get on a site and you get the crap beat out of you because you're just trying to show somebody a better, kinder, softer way to do something. That was the live fishing trip yesterday. It was pretty spectacular. That's awesome. I mean, we need to be positive. I mean, there should be no negativity in what we're doing. I mean, um, I, yeah, I've, I've been asked not to be on certain boards because I would tell people that doesn't make any, I mean, why are we being, why are we arguing about something when somebody has a different opinion? So let them have a different opinion. We don't need to argue about it. I mean, I wrap a rod certain way. Somebody else wraps a rod certain way. Some people use certain glues. Some people use different glues. Let's, talk, let's just help each other to grow and, and to in, enjoy what we do. I mean, negativity is something that I stay away from as much as possible. Yeah, and I'm so active social media that I get bombarded with the negative. I can't control sure. those other places. But when you come right. onto our website, I can control all that. And there is zero negativity allowed. Well, really, you know what, though? Bill, we talk about it so much that no one's even thinking about negative stuff on there. Everybody's right. so happy that they get to talk to each other with no, right. you do, you're not worried. You're not looking over your shoulder. Should I ask this? You can ask anything and everybody's positive. It's That's great. It's the best. It's by far, it's the best thing I ever seen. And I've been in this industry for for doing it for a living since 1978. And uh, I've never seen anything like this in our industry. Growing up as a kid, if you got caught sharing what we were doing, you were kicked out of the club. And That's now right. I share everything with all our members. And we tell you exactly where we are, exactly what we're doing, because there's nothing better than seeing them go out there the next day and catch a fish right where we told them to go. And now catch a fish with your name on it, your favorite colors on it. That's going to be really spectacular, you guys. <laughs> I remember my dad getting phone calls back in the 70s and in the 80s. Bob, you can't tell people that because there's a book, Hawaiian Fishing, and, um, what was it? Uh, Fishing Hawaiian Style. There's a book and my father wrote some articles and put, it's in this book about how to fix a real seat or how to fix a tip top. My dad was getting these phone calls. Bob, you can't be sharing that information with people. My dad's like, if we don't share, it's going to die. I mean, and this was back in the 70s and 80s. People were getting mad at him for sharing. I mean, you got guys like Doc Ski who are, you know, making videos and showing him exactly how to do a tiger wrap or weaves or all kinds of stuff. Sharing is one of the best forms of caring for somebody or an industry is by sharing. Absolutely. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. That's why I've been on the front of this for a very long time, sharing where yep. to go fish and how to go fish. Because if we don't show them how to do it, then they're going to help. They're going to help the people that want to close it, close it by saying, there's no fish out there. I can't catch anything. Well, you're not part of the 10%. Could you imagine if there was no fishing? And we're getting close. I we mean, are getting close. It's just crazy. California shut down fishing. I mean, wow. I love to come to California and fish. I mean, I, I fly down from Washington, even though I have great fishing up here. We got the albacore. You know, we got the halibut. We've got amazing fishing up here. I travel around the world and I fish and I consult fishing rod companies and research and development and do all that kind of stuff. I'm blessed to be able to do that. But. I'd really miss if there was no fishing in California. If I can, if I can't take my grandkids fishing, wow! I don't know. Time I'm to so move. Excited. It would be time to move. Yeah, I'm so excited to think about taking my granddaughter. I've already taken my grandson fishing. He caught a million fish. I can't wait to take my granddaughter. She's just a little tiny, too little right now. She's not even two, but I don't want to live on that planet. No, I do not want to live on that planet. No, I mean, fishing has done so much for me and my family and the memories. And I, I'd be sad if I couldn't couldn't uh, take my kids fishing. And but, Elliot just threw that up, that CCACalifornia.org yeah. gang. You need to get involved. We need yes. all the help you can get. Like Mike Lum said, we're at the point now where we're begging. We used to ask you for you to help us. Now we're begging. We need your donations. This machine that is trying to close fishing is so strong and so powerful and so well funded. We need to all get involved and give give whatever you can. Give a little bit. Give a lot. Whatever you can give. We got to keep fishing open, man. We like Bill Batson said. We don't want to live on the planet if we can't Woo. fish. 
CCA is a huge program. I mean, I've been a, I'm a life member of CCA. You know, I've been involved in CCA for over a decade. I've seen what they've been able to do in other fisheries in regards to like Texas and Louisiana and saving the red fisheries and things like that. I support CCA. I think everybody should support CCA because they're, they're taking it to the next level. They're taking your money and they're going in lobbying in Washington for our fishing rights. I mean, this is, this is just way beyond, you know, here's a petition kind of a deal. These guys are taking it and they're putting it in front of lawmakers and they're fighting for our fisheries. That's what they're doing. That's what CCA does. Um, I know some people, oh, I, I pay, I help, I help, I help. I don't see anything. Things take time. I mean, things don't happen overnight. I mean, but I have seen, and I know for a fact that this, this organization will help your fisheries. And at the end of the day, it's really the only voice we have at the table. We don't have another voice at the table. So yep. if you don't like it, create a voice and let me know how free <laughs> that is. Yeah. And CCA has been around for a long time and they've made a lot of um, improvements and strides in, in our fisheries. They, you can't deny that they, they make a, they make a difference. So like I said, I'm a life member of CCA. I've been for a long time. I've been supporting this industry for a long time, and I put my money in CCA. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Lifetime, the whole family is, my family yep. super involved in this thing, just like Bill's. We got a weird, weird question. I, yeah. I, I think it's kind of interesting. Of all the rods you guys have built over all the years, what was the one that was the most expensive, and what did it have on it that made it so expensive? Oh, let me think about that. Because that's kind of a unique question. Yeah, it is a unique question. So out of all the custom rods that I have in my shop right now, okay, there's one, I know. So my father, before he passed away, he, he was a designer. So he designed a three-piece steelhead rod. It's an eight-foot, three-piece steelhead rod. So it was in development when my father passed away. We made three of them. We burned the pattern. We threw away the mandrels and we made three blanks. That was it. So the, out of those three blanks, two of them are built into custom rods. One was built into the Bob Batson signature rod. The rod has uh, amazing, it's amazing build. So on the back end of it, it has um, green dyed burl wood handles. The reel seat is carved out. A trigger reel seat is carved out. There is a beautiful red banded steel head weave. There's a beautiful um, uh, cross wrap on it. Looks like scales. And then at the top of it is my dad's signature in a weave. Oh, Just like wow. my dad would sign a sign anything, Bob Batson. And the guy built it and he put my dad's signature as a weave on the rod. Right. Oh my gosh. That had to be so yeah. gnarly. It's amazing. If you're ever in my facility, all of these rods are on display. That one's under a glass case on a beautiful shelf in the in the uh, as soon as you walk into my facility. So if I was going to look at the most expensive build, I'm going to probably say that is one of the most expensive builds because of the mandrel and the pattern and the time. And no more were ever produced except three. And two of them are built and they're in the front of my office. The other one is in a safety deposit box. And um just amazing memories right there's i can walk around here out of 800 rods i can tell you the story behind every single rod i have in my collection from just guys that are no longer with us like brett akari you know sato custom rods i mean he built me three rods that are in, or three rods that are in my collection and i actually after he passed away i went out and fished with one and caught a bluefin on it and i wiped it down and i put it back in the collection you know because you you can't replace guy. You can't replace those. But at the same time, they're functional art. It's functional art. It's beautiful. You put your rods on the rack and you get on a boat and your rods are there and you've got all these custom rods. People are walking up going, whoa, wow. You know, and um, anyways, stuff like that. Just endless memories and en endless memories for sure. It's magical. Now I'm coming. I'm coming up there. My yeah. One of my best friends that I grew up with since kindergarten just built a house. And it's called Squim, 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 Squim. Yes, yes. Squim. He just built a house there. Jim no Spichona. way. Yep. Just that's got, awesome. So now I have a big reason to come up there and hang out. <laughs> Jimbo's been telling me for a long time, Dave, you need to come here and check this out. 
And I was like, but it's freaking cold. Easy now. Yeah, don't don't move here. Whatever you do. We don't need any more people here. <laughs> That's what I always say when people tell me about Mexico. Aren't you Yeah, no, 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 no. No, you don't want to come here. No, you don't want to come here. We don't need any more people here. Be afraid. Be scared. Uh, yeah, we're way out in the boonies. We're on the Olympic Peninsula. It's like two hours from Seattle, and it's just – in my opinion, one of the most beautiful spots in the world. But oh, the things he shows me, the pictures he shows me, the water, just water everywhere, water yeah. everywhere. That's it's, that's like yeah. a passion. How For do you sure. walk from one point to the other without throwing the line in? Exactly. So exactly. I got to get up there and go yes. build your facility. I got to go up Come there on and up. Make some videos. A little research and development we can get out on the boat maybe you come up this summer we can go chase those albacore you guys haven't seen in a long time Ooh, yeah, they're out I in front of my nice, house over here <laughs> i miss a nice chunk of albie that would be yummy oh, oh i love that white oily meat oh it's so good it's oh, so good yeah i haven't you know. lived on the planet where we learned how to take care of them i remember the old days when we just threw them in gunny sacks and they were just yeah. a big ball of mush now you, you got to learn how to take care of your fish period oh, yeah I it's mean, my fish world. never sees fresh water until I'm ready to eat it. I mean, when I clean any of my saltwater fish, obviously you bleed them, right? But when I'm cleaning them, I never let it touch fresh water. As soon as that fresh water gets on that fish, that's when the bacteria starts, right? Yeah. So never let my fish, I paper towel everything and then I eat it. You know, oh, yeah. never. And I can't you know. wait to get a nice, well taken care of piece of albacore. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. We, do, we can a lot too. We got out about half a dozen times last year, which was nice. And, you know, I got a 28-foot center council, big aluminum boat, you know, and we can go pretty much anywhere we need on with that boat. It's a company boat. <laughs> and then what rod are you, are you guys fishing live bait? Are you fishing? Um... No, we're, through, we're dropping. Where we live, um, there's no live bait. There's only live bait in one place in the state, and that's down at Westport. So we're fishing out of here um, at a La Push, and we're, we're – pulling swim baits and cedar plugs until we find them. Right. And then we leave that one on and then we start throwing swim baits at them and then dropping jigs for them. So that's how we're catching those fish. So on your swim bait rods, you got your rod compared to like a 196 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Lighter rods, you know, we're fishing 30 pound tests, you know, them and they're, they're, they're a little softer rods because you know, the albacore have softer miles, right? So, you don't want a real fast rod. You want a little slower rod, little more moderate, fast action rods. So we're using RCKJBs, Rain Shadow, Rain Shadow Composite, knife jigging blanks. We call it a knife jigging blank. Um, we're using, you know, some of our live bait series, more of the moderate action, a little bit quicker, but S-class stuff. But yeah, that's how we're catching those fish. I That video that's playing right now is, I was up at Tommy Gomes's a couple weeks ago and did a full tour with... <laughs> With his manager, that that video went bananas on social media. That's what we need to do at Bats and Enterprises. We need to come up there and do a little tour. Yeah, most definitely. I've got an awesome facility, an awesome team, and we've got a big rod building room. We've got a huge facility, and yeah, you come on up. You let me know when you want to come up. I'll host you for sure. Far out, gang. It looks like we're making a trip up there to Washington, everybody. Yeah, so Bill. If these, if people want to find out about how to get a hold of Bats and Enterprises, you guys are only wholesale. You don't do yep. any retail, correct? No retail. I mean, we do sell some clothing and little knickknack stuff uh, retail, but we're pure wholesaler. You can go to our website right there. Visit Bats and Enterprises. You can find a dealer near you. A big dealers for us down there. We have um, Island Fishing Tackle sells a lot of our stuff up in oh, Carson. Yeah. Sam, yeah. Sam's an awesome yeah. guy. You know, you can go down to Seaforth, you can go down to Fisherman's Landing, you can go down to M&M, all those people carry our parts and pieces down there. And we have on online stuff you can order from people all over the country. Like I said, we've got we've got a very big presence. If you're a rod builder and you have a business license, we sell to you guys like that too. So, but any questions, I mean, and your email will be answered within 24 hours Monday through Friday. We don't work on the weekends. And any emails will be answered. I answer emails my my whole team depending on the, the the content of the email that's who i i pick who sees these emails and i see 100 emails a day but that's what i do because of my passion and i feel it i yeah. feel your passion and you know how i always know 
when I got the right guy on here is because I look up and the hour's over. And I'm like, wow, yeah. we, that was a fast hour, dude. And we didn't even really talk about it. But um, my producer, Elliot, has to run. He's got yeah. some stuff to do. So, gang, we're going to wrap this show up. I want to thank Bill Batson for being a part of the show. And Dave Burris, as soon as we get done, I'll text you Bill's number. You can call him up Monday or Tuesday or something. You guys can have a yep. conversation about product. It's the weekend. Don't yes. bug Bill. Don't, Don't bug me on the weekend. Bill. Please don't bug Bill. Don't bug him at all. Come on now. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, turn off the news. Everybody out there is lying. This is the only place you get the truth.